Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Students, uh, welcome to one more lecture of the uh, uh, practitioner's uh, approach and business analytics on descriptive, prescriptive, and predictive analytics. And today we are getting into one of the we will take a small deviation to a concept called business intelligent and analytics. So the title is business intelligent and analytic intelligence and analytics today. And why we get into this course today is because from here after we are getting into a lot of uh, high end business analytic models like customer life cycle value, so then market basket analysis, risk analytics and those kind of stuff and which requires large data sets and playing uh, with the data that is al pretty much allowing coming from a uh, business intelligence system or a data warehouse or something like that. So in that regard we require we need to know uh, what are the uh, what are some of the major aspects of business intelligence and why is it an important component of business analytics okay and i'm dr philip from iit kanpur so uh, getting into the topics uh, the business intelligence uh, everybody hears about this topic called bi and we all talk about bi 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 so what is business intelligence and let's define business intelligence for this course as it refers to a collection of tools okay it's another set of tools collection of tools and techniques okay, this is tools a collection of tools and techniques for data management for managing the data and analysis of the data analysis and decision support okay so it help us to manage the data help us to analyze, analyze the data and help us to support the decision support using the data. Many a times people take business intelligence as a mistaken component or the concept of the uh, business intelligence is mistaken by people. Okay? People assume that, people assume, okay, they think that BI represents, represents the entire analytic operation the entire analytics operation it's not true okay okay this is wrong not correct okay the fact is bi is just one component of analytics it is not analytics, it is just a component of analytics and it is a collection of tools and techniques in the simplest sense it is a collection of tools and techniques to uh, for managing the data uh, and then using this to do the analysis. So how did the B business intelligence systems or business intelligence grew from the basic version of TPS? So the TPS stands for transaction processing systems. processing system okay which are in a way they are dumb systems containing canned applications canned means pre-programmed canned applications applications uh, for data collection okay a classic example of this is the bank teller operation bank teller applications so when you transfer money from one account to another or when you put deposit a money into an account and other things it just basically stores the data so this is the electronic storage of data 
instead of even just storing let us call the word accumulation. Okay. That is what happens in a transaction processing system. Then after the transaction processing systems, okay, then comes a system called as MIS, okay, which is called as the management information system. In the management information system, these are like you know uh, used to analyze the data collected through TPS. So, whatever data we are collecting through TPS, MIS basically analyzes this. Okay. And why do we do this? Some reports reports are created created for uh, better daily management. So, one example of this is the TPS will store all the data like an example is like uh, uh, TPS stores data in a bank. Okay. MIS analyzes it, it to find top 10 account holders okay, who have the largest balance in it. So, then when these people come into the bank that the bank manager might like to talk to them personally, interact with them stuff like that, so that they deposit more money into it. So, the manager is using this information to basically do better daily management, so that he can get uh, more uh, funds into the uh, into his bank. So, the third part of it is is what we call as the decision support system uh, instead of that let us write it as DSS colloquially known as DSS which is called as the decision support system. Okay. What is the big thing about it is this is the system aimed to assist in long term strategic decision making also help to analyze unstructured problems. The major difference between MIS and DSS is that the DSS helps to deal with the unstructured problem. So, let us uh, I will explain to this in a minute, but if you look at the transaction processing system here is a customer okay, and the customer comes to the uh, let us say here is a computer and here is your uh, bank teller. Okay, and the data gets stored someplace, this becomes the TPS. Okay. Now, another thing about it is, if you think about the same system, the TPS data is coming in, this is TPS and here you have your manager okay. and manager interacts with the TPS okay. and in that process he has a MIS data and he is looking into his computer and here is a customer. He is anyway interacting with the TPS through the teller as we said earlier and that manager looks at the MIS and then he interacts with the uh, customer for better daily management. Okay. This is the, uh, the MIS followed by the manager. On the other hand the DSS is more like DSS is a system where you have uh, something called as a database, it could have underneath this TPS data, it will also have 
MIS data, you will also have other data sources as well. Then there is uh, 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 what we call as a interface, okay. interface for people to interact with the system, okay. so on which the people will interact, the decision maker will interact. And it also has uh, different models. Okay. These models might include uh, mathematical, then could be simulation, okay. then qualitative, okay. there could be multiple models. And so, in this case, what happens is using the interface the DSS allows the decision maker to interact with the data, the models and then resulting in better or informed rational decisions. Okay. So, DSS to a large extent uh, these models this could also include analytics model. This is also a part of the model. So, DSS is very close to what we can call it as a, uh, what we think about it as a uh, analytic system. So, one aspect of it is okay, this part, where you are collecting data and storing of this. This could be, could be roughly called as BI, business intelligence where you are collecting the data and keeping it. It is not just the database, it is a little bit more than that, okay. the tools and techniques as I said earlier. So, the BI evolution, uh, when you think, think about it, there are three types of evolutions with which was with the BI okay. and they are similar to what I just drew earlier, but there is some, some difference to it. The first evolution is what we call as the single pass system. Okay. And the single pass system is data flows, data flows linearly, linearly from uh, transaction processing to BI business intelligence and reports are generated and reports are generated. generated uh, by generated and used by analyst. Okay. So, if you think about it the idea is like this you have TPS coming in TPS then from there the data linearly goes to the business intelligence system the BI system from there uh, various reports are generated is the computer reports are generated and here is the analyst uh, who uses the report. Okay. So, it is a single pass it goes in one direction. Right. Now, the second pass of the the second uh, type of the evolution in this case is overlapped system overlapped system. Some people also called this as the looped system. Okay. Uh, it is also it is an open looped system actually it is not really a closed loop system because the next evolution is a closed loop system. So, what here it is that data is not just uh, obtained from BI. Uh, but is also obtained uh, from other sources. Okay. So, an example of this would be you have a system the typical system the TPS to BI to the uh, reports. Okay. Let us think about this as the reports. Okay, and the analyst is looking into this. 
the other part of it is also there is somewhere called as a external data okay and this data from there okay you have like something like a, a analytics database okay and from there there are various tools of analytics using this the reports are it this tools also provides reports which also goes into the uh, analyst okay and this is the analyst okay so it is not just that is the uh, bi data but also external data are used but here the difference is that uh, there is the biggest disadvantage of the system is okay uh, you can also think about somewhere uh, during the tools you can probably modify the analytics database also but the data sources are not synchronized okay so you are kind of still analyzing the bi and as well as analytics independently and the analyst is the one who is taking a look into this okay so it's kind of an overlapped system but the overlapping is to a large extent uh, is the decision of the uh, analyst uh, the third one, uh, let me write it here. The third system is what we call as the closed loop system. Okay, and the closed loop system, which is what is called as the next generation BI, next generation business intelligence BI, and it eliminates it eliminates loops and overlaps so what happens in this system is basically you have your tps and you have your business intelligence okay uh, and uh, we have our bi okay from bi there are analytic tools okay let's think about this as analytic tools there is some synchronization that goes back to TPS also. And then similarly, there is external source, okay. external source. From the external source, there are data management applications. Okay. And from there, they create something called as a, you know, uh, data arrival storage okay and then these two datas are combined okay think about it that way and then the this is where the analytics tools comes into picture okay and then that is looked up by the analyst so a system where the data is synchronized and these loops the open loops are eliminated okay that kind of a system is actually called as a, uh, a closed loop system it's a next generation bi it's also an expensive system so currently the most of the systems are here most present state systems are in the overlapped mode okay very rarely the closed loop systems are used all right now let's talk about uh, things like uh, data ware thing the concept of data warehouse uh, people talk about this quite a lot and uh, there are a lot of misconceptions about this. So, what data warehouse is a very simple concept. It is a long time storage of data collected from the operational data stores. Okay. So, when you have operational data stores where day to day operational data or data that is related to the day to day functioning is getting stored, from there data is collected and uh, taken for long term storage, stored for a long term. The key aspect is the key aspect of data warehouse is that data is never okay, is the key word is never deleted never deleted from a warehouse warehouse and once it is once it reaches the warehouse once data reaches the warehouse 
reaches the warehouse, then what happens? It becomes a permanent record. A permanent record. So, you can think about it as in a data warehouse where data is collected from different operational site stores and it is there for long term storage, which in another terms means it never gets deleted from a warehouse. That means once the data reaches, if the data reaches the warehouse, then it becomes a permanent record of the sort. So, what are the capability of the data warehouse? What capabilities do it require to achieve this function? Okay. So, what happens is warehouses, data warehouses are structured, they are structured to handle complex queries on large data systems. Okay. So, they are designed to basically for uh, handling large complex queries or this is uh, you can think about it as a request for information that is what you call as a complex queries. Okay. But one thing also you should remember is that speed and responsiveness, responsiveness okay, is not, it is not the main factor of data warehouse of data warehouse. Okay. So, data house warehouse is not really designed for speed and responsiveness. Its main aim is to basically store the data permanently and also handle complex queries and provide the appropriate information. Okay. But most important one other important fact is data warehouse is an expensive way of providing business intelligence. So, BI is a set of tools uh, and techniques that allows us for the storage of data for future usage. Okay. So, if you follow the data warehouse route, okay, then it is a very expensive way because data gets never deleted. So, as you make it as a record in the data warehouse, it keeps on the volume keeps on increasing and the storage costs increases. Okay. Then the next concept is called as the data mart. Okay. This is another aspect and people sometimes confuse between data warehouse and data mart. Uh, there is a relationship between them, but both are different. What data mart, it, it is a very specialized portion of, of the data warehouse okay? or it is a, you can think about it as a specialized slice of data from the warehouse. Okay? You are taking a very specialized portion or a slice of the data from the warehouse, you are extracting it to address very specific business needs okay, to answer very specific business decision questions. You want to find out what are the very specific business needs and you want to typically address them. Okay. The while the data warehouse ownership is with the organization data mart's ownership is by the business units of the organization. So, you can think about it this way data warehouse the ownership is organization. The organization owns the warehouse whereas, data mart is the business units of the organization. So, that is the idea here, right. So, why do we use data marts? Data marts are specifically, okay, they are used to do specific analysis without disturbing the structure of data warehouse. Because remember, data warehouse, data warehouse is not designed for speed and responsiveness. Whereas, in the data mart, you are anyway doing specific analysis and you do not want to disturb the structure of the data warehouse. So, then you can take a very specialized cut from the data warehouse and then use it. Okay. And data mart is considered as one of the best practices in the industry 
okay uh, but but data marts are not they are not essential ingredients or ingredient of bi okay to provide business intelligence you need not have data mart okay data mart is an optional thing if you have data mart which means you are taking a very specialized portion of data from the warehouse uh, to answer your specific business question then that becomes a best practice in the industry because you are not disturbing the structure of the data warehouse because data warehouse is a permanent record so i hope you guys understand the concept of data mart clearly because this is one concept that lot of people get confused with okay now we get into the next concept which is called as the data stewardship okay this is another interesting concept uh, which is developed based on the gigo principle gigo stands for garbage in garbage out that means if you put the garbage into the analysis system the data is fouled or wrong and other things then you will get a garbage analysis out of the system okay so the first step of analytics is any before any analytics decide whether the data can be used for analytics see whether the data is fit for doing the analytics why do you need to do that because data may contain data may contain problems that can result in incorrect analysis that can result in incorrect analysis and thereby uh, resulting in misleading decisions if you want to do proper decisions not to take wrong decisions then you have to ensure that the data does not have any problems that can result in incorrect analysis okay so data stewardship it is a set of activities activities that convert raw data into usable data for analytics so the aim here is that you first your aim is to convert the raw data which could have problems and convert that by eliminating the problems and other things so that the data can is usable for analytics once you do that process is called as the data stewardship okay and the most common tools that are used for are sorting you already seen histograms frequency distribution box plots scatter diagrams etc okay so we have seen many almost all of these tools and see how these tools can be used to decide whether the fitness so they all help in quantifying the fitness of the data of the data for analysis where we are checking whether we can use this data to do analysis that is the part of data stewardship moving on we get into the uh, next uh, the important portion of this which is what is called as the errors in the data this is a very large field and in a course like this our aim is to introduce you briefly into the main errors in the data uh, data systems and what are the errors that you need to be worried about if you are conducting analytics so from a practitioner's view point we need to be aware of some of the errors and you need to find out ways to tackle them okay uh, there are many type of errors if you think about it uh, many of them are available but there are four which are quite common and we will be dealing with uh, these we will be talking about these four as part of this uh, uh, present this lecture and we will try to find out how to deal with these four type of data errors the first one we talk about is the outliers okay outliers they are defined as they are data values data values that are 
that are distant okay long distance distant from other observations okay they are distant from other observations which means they lie they lie at or they lies at abnormal distance abnormal distance from the rest of the data okay so here the trick here is that from the rest of the data these data values are too far away they lay at a much distant very distant from the other data values okay so a couple of uh, ways to handle this handle this by checking minimum and maximum minimum and maximum values okay and this will provide a quick idea what it is right and another tool is a box plot with fences is a good tool so if you use box plot with uh, fences we have already shown you that you can use the upper inner fence lower inner fence upper outer fence lower outer fence to identify potential outliers and as well as uh, definite outliers in this regard so outliers you can be handled by dealing with the can be quickly identified by checking the min and max values and see whether it is within the range and can be definitely taken care of by the little bit of the tool that we studied little earlier called as the box plots and uh, that it can be used to handle the outliers the next form of issue that we are going to talk about is called as the duplicates okay it is also known as there are many names for this also known as doubles redundant data redundant data duplicate uh records etc there are many ways to talk about this okay but the this is typically typically arising through the usage of of wrong keys okay so for example uh, i'll try demonstrate an example to you uh, assume that we are using uh, the uh, assume that electronic product name is used as a key so one electronic product is called as television this is an electronic product okay and somebody says let's say we are storing the data of the available television models in the led television models in the uh, firm and let's say we say that we have 32 inch 38 inch then 43 inches 58 inches and 100 inches let's say what it is and somebody instead of the television uses the concept called tv and stores the same data okay 58 inch and 100 inches then these two these two can be called as the duplicate records the same exact data but the only reason is because of the television and tv have been used to represent the same concept but on a database systems these are two different values and hence duplicate value gets into picture and this is typically a nightmare to deal with okay and uh, to a large extent uh, the one way to do it is okay sorting is a way sorting helps to identify okay or sorting or other option is grouping okay sorting and grouping tools allows us to identify duplicates very well that's why we studied quite a lot of grouping tools earlier in this stuff okay so then the third one we can talk about it as rule violations where we can call it as specific 
data collection rules are violated. Rules are violated. It can be due to many reasons, sometimes instrumental error and other things. But think about a situation where, and I will give you an example is, you are storing the temperature data of a furnace. Okay. So, you have, uh, if you think about the data, you can think about it as, uh, there is a time stamp and the temperature. Okay. Assume that you are storing the temperature initially in degrees Celsius and at say 10, 10 am that was, it was 120 degrees Celsius, at 10, 20 am it was 190 degrees Celsius like this. And somewhere in between, let us assume that the system got changed to Fahrenheit then these temperature values will immediately change. So, changing the rule of degree Celsius to degree Fahrenheit okay, messes the values. Okay. So, this is an example of the violation of the uh, data rule. Okay. Then the last part we are going to talk today is about the missing values. Missing values are where data values whose information never got stored. In the data. So, uh, an example of this is let us say you are um, uh, storing transaction banking bank fund transfer data. Okay. And let us say in this process you you have to know uh, the source account, okay. then uh, target account, uh, then uh, money, how much of money is being transacted. Uh, currency, which currency you are transacting and all those kind of things. So, let us say that you are transacted between USD and INR okay. and on that particular day, uh, let us say you, uh, you did not store the or did not collect the data for that particular day, the exchange rate, then that missing value would probably result in the wrongful transaction wrongful conversion of the USD money, the United States dollars to Indian rupees in that regard. Okay. Let us say you did not store that conversion value, then that missing value, what value that you are used to convert this USD to INR will be missing because you might also result in using a commission out of this if you are doing this transaction. So, we will not be able to decipher the uh, amount and uh, bank commission as part of this. Okay. So, that kind of uh, examples. So, uh, this is a vast field as I said earlier, but the aim here is that we will uh, we will take a quick look into it and so that you are exposed or aware about these are the main uh, errors, data errors that you see. And data stewardship is to a large extent identify such type of anomalies and mistakes in the data and correct them and so that the data is suitable or is a fit for the analytics process. With this, uh, we conclude our today's uh, lecture on data where business intelligence and as well as its importance or why it is a very important component of doing data analytics. Thank you very much.